Hey there, today I shall be discussing internuclear ophthalmoplasia, also known as INO. Now, when do you classically see INO? This condition is known as MS or multiple sclerosis, and that's a demyelinating condition, uh, which is autoimmune as well. So your own body starts demyelinating your nerve fibers. And the reason nerve fibers are myelinated, so by myelinated, I mean, if this is your nerve fiber, in the CNS, you have oligodendrocytes, which myelinate them. And in the PNS, you have Schwann cells. Now, when, when they myelinate a cell, they, uh, in, in short, they ensure that conduction velocity is really high. So when you're demyelinating a cell, you're losing conduction velocity. And as nerves, they want to be transmitting information as fast as possible, so there's no delay between signals. So let's discuss what exactly happens in INO. So first, let's begin with the cerebral cortex, which I have highlighted in the, in the black. So this is the cortex. Okay, now next you have the frontal eye field in the red, so FEF. So you have the frontal eye field in the red, left um, on both sides. And then in the brown, you have the PPRF. So PPRF. So this is the paramedian pontine reticular formation. In the orange, you have the MLF, medial longitudinal fasciculus. In six and three, you have the two cranial nerves, six being abducens, three being the oculomotor. And most importantly, in the purple, you have the lateral rectus. And in this lime green, you have the medial rectus. Okay. Now, let's begin with the normal pathway. So, in normal physiology, normal, normal um, functioning of the brain, this is what you would see. Let me just get rid of the MLF here so it doesn't interfere with our nerve pathways. Okay. So, normal physiology, right? You get a nerve that begins in the frontal eye field. Okay, it decusates and synapses in the PPRF. Now, you get this nerve, which is... So the PPRF and the abducens nerve are very, very closely linked together. So any lesion in the PPRF affects 6, and any lesions in the 6 affect the PPRF. So that's how they work. Now, in 6, you have two nerves that come out of this way. So the first nerve, if you can guess, because it's six, six will obviously connect to the lateral rectus because that's what it innervates. So at first glance, um, you're, in a, you're in a safari in Kenya. Uh, there's a tiger to your right. Um, your friend points it out to you and they're like, have a look. And you're like, all right, I need to take a look at this. So your cerebral cortex uh, sends signals to the PPRF. The PPRF sends signals to the abducens nerve. And the abducens nerve activates the lateral rectus, which pulls your right eye to the right. Okay, that's happened. And you know, your right eye is looking to the right. But now because just your right eye is looking to the right, you have the ploplia, that's a problem. So the body solution to this is the nerve coming out of the PPRF onto the six innervates two nerves, two separate nerves. So one nerve goes to the lateral rectus, the second nerve it travels along here and goes to the contralateral MLF. So not the ipsilateral MLF, the contralateral MLF. And then the contralateral MLF supplies the oculomotor nerve. And as we know, the oculomotor nerve supplies the medial rectus. So now what's happened is um, because 6 is very closely linked to the MLF on the opposite side, it also sends a message to the MLF on the opposite side, which sends a message to the oculomotor. And this pulls the left eye to the right. Okay. In medical terms, the right eye is being abducted. Okay. So let's write this down. This is the abducted and the left eye is being adducted, which, which in simple short term means abduction means away from the midline. Adduction means towards the midline. And you know, as I drew out the midline for you before, that is the midline. Okay. That is the midline. So towards the midline, away from the midline, okay? That is normal functioning physiology. One more thing to add is, as I was talking about the myelination, 
this nerve from the 6 to the MLF is very, very heavily myelinated. So this conduction will be rapid and that's why there's conjugate movement. Conjugate movement means both of them together, okay? And they move at the same time and the body needs this to happen so that... Let's give him blue eyes or hair. There. Let's move to the right and you have conjugate movement to the right as well. Now, in the case of I and O, okay, you have the same basic physiology so you start off with the nerve in the eye field it goes to this side synapses here okay now in this case let's give this person a left-sided eye no so by left-sided go for a really light color by left-sided i mean this side okay that side's taken off I hope you can still see this stuff in the back, even with this random color that I decided to go with, but yeah. So now what happens is you have the same functioning, it goes to the abducens nerve, you have one and two, and this synapse goes to there. So the lateral rectus on the right side is working fine. So with left-sided eye, no, the contralateral eye is working fine. So the contralateral eye abducts towards the right. but with the ipsilateral eye, so the ipsilateral eye to the, um, the lesion, this nerve that normally supplies the MLF, that normally synapses there, and that normally connects to there, is still, is still connected because in demyelinating syndromes, the actual axon isn't affected, it's only the myelination. So the myelination in this one uh, to represent the last myelination, let's give it these small x's. This only refers to the last myelination. So now, uh, naturally, if you've lost your myelination, a nerve that was conducting at, you know, uh, one millisecond or like half a millisecond or like a tenth of a millisecond to, you know, reach the opposite side is now conducting at five seconds, for example. That's an exaggeration. Don't quote me on this. But, you know, just for the purposes of your understanding let's say five seconds, okay? So now the same blue-eyed person abducts their right eye. And because there's such a delay in the mo motion, the signal going to the opposite eye doesn't work. So there's no signal going there. So the right eye abducts, but this left eye fails to adduct. So in a left-sided eye, no, the left eye is affected and the left eye cannot abduct. The right eye can abduct though, okay? Now, a second thing that's also seen is nystagmus. So how does nystagmus works in this case is um, your sixth nerve is innervated by the PPRF. So you have the nerve from the PPRF coming in. You have the first cell body there. And you have this second cell body which connects there okay so normally the lateral rectus is innervated the you know contralateral mlf is broken which is characterized by this cross mark there so what ends up happening is the lateral rectus is being uh, you know signaled by the abducens nerve and it pulls it to the right but now the body realizes that your left eye hasn't moved so it sends a second impulse to the abducens nerve, okay? And then between these two impulses, there's a slight delay. And in that delay, you, because the innervation is lost for a slight second, you get this slow dotted um, recovery of the abduction back to the midline because the body's always trying to be at midline. So as the innervation is lost, this lateral rectus muscle that is relaxed for a slight, slight moment and you get slight movement of the eye back to the midline. But then the second impulse comes in from the brain asking the abducens nerve to function because how it works is when the brain asks the abducens nerve to function, automatically the uh, left eye is connected to it. So it's not like the brain is sending two different impulses. It's sending one and this causes both of them to move at the same time. But because the second one, which is going to the oculomotor, isn't working, the MLF, 
the brain's like, okay, I need to send a second signal, you know, to both eyes, uh, to both nerves. Um, so in, in that second signal, you get the brisk movement back to the abduction. And then this phenomenon keeps repeating itself as long as the right eye is abducted. So you get this nystagmus, which is characterized by a slow, slow movement towards the lesion. Okay, so you get um, slow towards lesion. Okay, and you get. Uh, rapid movement away from the lesion and that's how nystagmus works okay so to summarize if you have a left sided I know okay if it's a left sided I know you get three things so one right I abduction with nystagmus okay two you get failure of left eye adduction okay but yeah so this is what happens and in the case of ms you get left eye ab with nystagmus and you get fail of right eye adduction okay so you have to remember though that these are conjugate movements so it only happens when you know you're trying to move both eyes at the same time now to check the normal functioning of the cn3 nerve you would check conver convergence and what convergence just signifies basically is you have two eyes, you have the medial rectuses. Now, if you were to fire both the medial rectuses, you would have convergence towards the midline. So this can be done by, you know, bringing your finger in close to someone's nose and asking them to have a look at the finger. And, you know, that's basically it. So, yeah, thank you for tuning in and I uh, hope this helped.